So sometimes you might get a rational equation that has more than one fraction in it. So what do you do then? So let's say we had something like x over 3 plus x over 5 equals, I don't know, 2 fifteenths. Okay, so what do we do with that? Um, huh, I really don't like these fractions here. Um, they're really, I guess they're not that big of a deal. We could find a common denominator, add them together, make one fraction. Um, but remember, this is an equation, so we're allowed to multiply by whatever we want. And I'm going to choose the number 15. Now you might be asking yourself, why did I pick the number 15? And I hope it'll be clear here in a minute. But if I multiply on both sides by 15, again, I have to distribute that 15 to each one of these um, terms. So they're being added together, so I have to distribute over that addition. So I get 15 times x over 3 plus 15 times x over 5. You can think of these 15s as 15 over 1 if that's helpful to you. And then on the other side, look what happens to the 15s. They cancel each other out, and leaving us with just 1. 15 divided by 15 is still 1. And so we're just left with 2 over here. 2 is nice and simple. All right. So what happens with these guys over here? Um, so if I look at this, if I look at simplifying each piece, so I'm just going to look at this first uh, term here. So I've got 15 over 1 times x over 3. And again, I can simplify this multiplying. So I end up with uh, 1 in the denominator and a 5 times x in the top, which is just 5x. Plus, and then I can look at this term and simplify it. So I can play the same game. 5 goes into 15 and leaves us with a 3. So we have a 3x, and then I still have my equal 2 on the other side. So we got rid of all of our fraction. Do you see yet why I chose 15? Well, 15 is the least common denominator between, or the least common multiple of 3 and 5. It's the number you would usually use if you were going to add these guys together. So what you do is you look for um, the least common denominator between all the denominators you have in your equation, and that's the number you choose to multiply. And it works every time because if you choose the least common denominator, you know each one of these denominators will divide it. And so it will cancel out all of your denominators and get rid of all of your fractions really nicely like it like we did here. So let's just finish this guy out. So 5x plus 3x, combining my like terms there, I've got 8x equals 2. And then I have to get the x, 1x by itself, so I've got 8 times x, so I'm going to divide by 8. And so I get my 8's cancel here and leaves me with just 1x equals 2 eighths, and that 2 eighths can simplify um, by 2 goes into the top and the bottom, so I'm left with just a 1 fourth. And there we have it, x equals 1 fourth. And you could certainly check, right, by plugging in. Um, it makes complex fraction, fractions kind of a mess. But we could still do it if we decided we wanted to check. We would just have to deal with the complex fractions. Um, and so you can see what I mean. Um, I have, if I'm putting in 1 fourth for x, I have 1 fourth over 3 plus 1 fourth over 5. And I should get equal to 2 fifteenths, right? Um, so we have to remember how to deal with this. 1 fourth divided by 3 is the same thing as 1 fourth times 1 third. And you can play the same game with the 1 fourth times 1 fifth. And sure enough, when we multiply these together, we get 1 twelfth plus 1 twentieth equals 2 fifteenths. 
And if we add the 1 12th and the 1 20th, sure enough, we will get 2 15ths. And that's it. That's all there is to solving these more, a little bit more complicated rational equations with multiple different denominators.